everybody and welcome to In My Mug, episode 135 on Monday the 13th of June 2011. My name is Steve Layton and I'm back home for a few days. So it's really lovely to be back in the roastery. Um, so last week's In My Mug came from the amazing Bogota uh, and this week from a cold and very rainy, excuse the noisy, warehouse in Stafford. But as I say, it's so lovely to be back. Um, Last week, as you know, I was at the WBC, if you watched the video, and uh, World Barista Championships, and Alejandro from El Salvador only went to walk along and won the damn thing, um, using the lovely uh, La Illusion from Ernesto, roasted by ourselves. Um, so pleased for Ernesto, uh, Frederico, his boss and coach, but mostly for Alejandro, who did like an awesome job. Um, we did a video with him the day after he'd won, so I'm gonna pop a link below. Um, go listen to what he has to say. He's an amazing guy and uh, we were very proud to work and be associated with him. Anyway, onwards and upwards, as in my mug is all about coffee. Um, but this week it's about two coffees, uh, both of them from Yemen. And you can't seem to talk about Yemen without talking about a little bit of the history of Yemen. So it is uh, known to be one of the first places outside of uh, Ethiopia for coffee to have been found. Um, it was a very busy port area, um, and certainly around about the 15th century they were cultivating coffee, uh, maybe much earlier, but they were tried very hard to, they didn't go out of Yemen, but being a port town, the, there's a story that in 1916 the Dutch brought coffee plants out of Yemen and then took them to their colonies uh, in Indonesia, and kind of also took them back to Holland where they grew it in a greenhouse, and... Uh, I don't know, I kind of don't like these stories very much, um, but it's most certainly the first one that it's, and I don't like them because they don't make a great deal of sense to me, they sound a little bit kind of uh, Jack and Ori. Um, but it's certainly the next place after Ethiopia that it was found, uh, and certainly the, the route out uh, of indigenous Ethiopia for coffee. So, subscribers of this week's will notice that on the packs uh, it says, on cup profile, to follow after In My Mug video blog. And the reason for this is, is a fewfold. First of all, as you know, I've been traveling. Um, we've had this coffee for, for a, a number of weeks now, but we haven't got around to putting it on the site. I approved the sample core around about nine weeks ago. And we know coffee changes, coffee develops. And I thought it would actually be quite useful to do the cupping notes live on the In My Mug. So the roast profile was decided by Andy and Roland. Uh, they did all of the work with that. They were quite happy to to, to, to go along with that. Um, and then I get to cup it with you guys. So it should be fun. So the first one is gonna be the Harazi. And the Harazi is a, a mixture of varietals, which is Jad, Tufaya, Dawi, and Izamali. I know that it's grown at an altitude of around about 1,500 to 2,100 meters. It's naturally processed. And we know that the Harazi mark means that it was grown in the Haraz Mountains, which is around about 90 kilometers west of uh, Sana, the main city. Um, so, let's cup it. Look at that for timing. So, I'm gonna break the crust on this one. I'm gonna stop that because it's annoying. And then I'm just gonna clean it off. Use the quietness, but I don't multitask well. Okay, so on this one, I'm getting. Oh, actually, sorry. Let me just break the crust on this one too. I don't want this one to carry on. So. I know that when I cut, sorry, there's lots of quiet bits here because I'm doing two things, but I know when I cut this one originally, this was definitely my most favourite. It has that typical, Yemen's have this very typical wininess going on there, like a red wine kind of base to it, and this has that. But on top of it, it has almost like a 
candied sugar kind of flavour. Um, I can't work out what it is. It's almost like a lemony kind of candied lemon. It's not sour. It's, it, the lemon is probably not the right word for it. But it definitely has this like candied sweet kind of. I'm gonna dive in again. Sorry, this is this is. These are two coffees that it's very difficult to do this on because they are very complex coffees. There's a little bit of earthiness. There's a little bit of that red wininess, but there's definitely like this candied sugar kind of fruit type thing to it, and I'm really struggling to nail it. I may have to come back to this one. So, the Sani, Sanani, sorry, is same varietals, a little bit more of a wider reach. Uh, Sanani is kind of like, it, it, it's a main port town and, and, and it's lots of different cooperatives come together. Perhaps the more generic of them, again, 1,500 to 2,100 metres around altitude. Um, yeah, and, and this one is much easier. I, I wish I'd kind of started over here. Because with this one, you're getting that red wine, it's got a big body, it's a little bit chewy, there's, there's a, a lovely earthy kind of, not dirty, but earthy, almost like a little bit of a, a little bit of, yeah, I like doing the shelf, you know, but of leather, and you get this real kind of, a very, very typical good Yemen, all rounded, all performing, does its thing. But this one, This one has got like a sweet aftertaste to it. There's a, the, it, right. Do you remember those jellied sweets? A little bit like a fruit pastel, but they're like, they were shaped in the shape of fruits. This reminds me very much of that candied lemon type fruity thing, which I'm gonna whap a picture of it on the screen because I, I can't explain it very well. But these are same process, same exporter, same country, same varietals, but two massively different, um, two massively different uh, expressions of it. So, I can't try them both as drinks because this would go on forever and ever and it's already gone on for long enough, I'm, I'm sure you will agree. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I, I'm, I really would like to try the Sonani as an espresso and as brewed and as um, uh, a cappuccino. More than the Harazi because the Harazi is good, I know that. I wanna see what I can get out of this and play a little bit more with it. This one is already a show-off coffee. This is, this is, the Harazi is amazing. The Sonani, I think I can get some more out of this doing it brewed. So I'm going to whap you on pause uh, and I'm going to be back in just a moment. Okay, so I'm back. I'm going to dive straight into the espresso. Now, pulling this with the espresso and for the cap, was, it is beautiful to pull. It's so easy to get right. See, you smell a little bit of that earthiness off the, uh, off the espresso. Red wine, just, just big, big red wine. The earthiness actually goes in the espresso, which surprises me, because I could taste it in the cupping. Let me just go back to that now. So you get the, leather, the leatheriness there that you don't get here. Here you just get that big red wine acidity. A big body, for sure, you know, that body's there, but incredibly clean for a Yemen. I mean, incredibly clean. So, into the one that I think it's gonna shine in, my preconceptions of Yemen's, that they work very well in milk, so. Okay. There goes my preconceptions. Um, it's good in milk, don't get me wrong. It is, it, 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 it's a nice milk drink, but it's a bit, meh. It's a bit kind of like, well, yeah, I'm coffee. I'm here. I've got some milk with me. I'm cool. But it's not blowing my mind. The espresso is much more pleasing because of just how clean it is and how surprising it is. So, gone for the French press method today. Um, my French press video should be out in the next couple of weeks. Um, we finally put the finishing touches to it at the moment, the, the brew guide. Looking forward to it. I think it may be a little controversial, but um, I'm very much looking forward to it getting out there. I kind of wish this 
as in the Harazi, who is in this brood, because it's a bit like with the milk. Meh, I'm here. But nothing. And but very clean again, very clean, which I like. T too many Yemens out there are baggy, saggy, and old and horrid. Um, this is very fresh, you can tell that in the, in the cup. Um, I think it's delicious, so I'm going to have a, a quick run round on the... Oh, wrong spoon. As it's cooling, the cup in your bowl gets more and more interesting. As this coffee cools, and I may like revisit this later um, as a brood, because maybe it's a bit too hot at the moment, it is only just brewed. Um, but it's just a bit... Ugh. Whereas in the milk, I thought it... I'm going to... Let me do my order. So, I think... Last place, milk, for me. It just didn't do it, didn't excite me. Whether that's just because I'm, I'm not having a lot of milk at the moment and I didn't really enjoy it, but yeah. Milk there, brewed there, espresso over here. As an espresso, I think this is stunning and he's absolutely amazing. I would love to try that one in the same way and I probably will in the privacy of my own, uh, uh, my own time and not yours, uh, but maybe I'll, I'll ping a uh, an audio boo up about my thoughts of this one with the three the three methods. So, uh, sum it up, it's, uh, they're both from Yemen, uh, they're both four varietals which are, oh god I'm going to do it again aren't I, Jihadi, Tafari, Darari and Islami. They're like the Teletubbies, kind of. Um, it's Yemen Sanani that we've done, um, and yeah, that's as much as we know about these coffees. It's, it's such a shame when you don't have a lot of provenance on them. But Yemen coffees are so unique that I think they're definitely worth uh, the persevering with for, with that anonym, anonymity. Anonymity. Yeah. <laughs> as you can tell, I'm quite tired at the moment. Uh, we've been working really hard since getting back. And yeah, it's, it's been a long few days. Um, before I go... Uh, if you like to watch in my mug, and if you don't have an iPhone, and you would very much like to be involved in the scores that you can put in, so you can keep your own scores and, and keep them together, we have a desktop version, which is going to be available in the next couple of weeks. But in the meantime, we need some testers. Only a handful. All we need you to do is put it through its paces and feed back to us what you like, what you don't like. Um, not so much the design elements of it, because I think it is what it is now, uh, but it's more that does it work, does it suit what the purpose is for and stuff. So drop me an email at steve at and uh, just pop in the title in my mug desktop version tester. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll get a version out to you to have a play and kick around with. Uh, really, we wanted to open up that whole thing because it's an iPhone app. You know, lots of people don't have iPhones, but nearly everybody has a, a computer. It's on the uh, Adobe Air platform, so if you have TweetDeck, you, you'll know what Air is, where it's like an operating system. We'll work on Mac, we'll work on PC. Um, so, yeah, you're not excluded in that way. Drop us a line, and we will get a copy out to you. Right, I am going to go. Sorry, it's been a bit funny today. I kind of, this was tough to do, and I am a little bit tired. Um... I'm still a little bit happy about last week with uh, um, Alejandro. Um, and still thinking that life is too short for bad coffee.